Welcome, everyone. We are joined today by the Honorable Jeannie McLean, Minister of Education and the Women and Gender Equity Directorate for the Government of Yukon. Minister McLean is joining us today to speak on the very important topic of missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and Two Spirit Plus people. Thank you, Minister McLean, for taking the time to share your knowledge and experience with us today. Uh, thank you very much, Emma. Uh, really pleased to be here today. Sorry that we're starting a little bit late. There was a couple, there were a couple of technical glitches. Um, I want to start by thanking Diane Smith for the beautiful prayer, and um, of course, all of the. Of course, I also want to acknowledge the Kwanlandan First Nation and the Ta'an Council and their beautiful traditional territory and for allowing us to do our, our work here in, in their homelands. I want to thank Minister McPhee and um, all the folks that have had a part in organizing this important summit. It's, uh, it's incredibly important, the discussions that are happening and the presentations. I have tried to listen to as much as I could in between all of my other um, work that I'm doing, but I uh, wanted to just really acknowledge Gary Bailey for his courage and for sharing his story about Sassity. I um, know that for sure it was heartbreaking for each and every one of us when um, she passed away so suddenly and I and I and I my heart goes out to you Gary but also to everyone that's going through this grief. And I know that, uh, you know, there are so many families, so many community, all of our communities are really um, heartbroken right now. And the grief is, is um, almost overwhelming some days where we think that we're going to have not knowing what path to take really to, um, find our way through this and one of the things that I've talked about a lot in these last year couple of years being in COVID is that we grieve together in the Yukon we really do and and particularly Indigenous people come together and hold each other up and these are not things we've been able to do and so that's last months to participate in their sacred fire and I want to thank them for making this a priority because it, it really is something that will help um, us through these really difficult times. Um, now we know of course that substance use and mental health is, is a crisis within our territory. We're losing so many of our young people and you know people from all, all ages really um, and one, what I wanted to talk to folks about today is, um, you know, the, I think the long and systemic, um, path that's brought us here today, that these are symptoms of long-standing systemic injustices that particularly Indigenous people have faced, um, and particularly women, girls, two-spirit plus people face every day. And um, I have had the absolute honor of working on the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. Um, and I worked alongside a lot of really strong women and I wanna acknowledge uh, a few of them today. Um, folks who've been on the, um, Yukon Advisory Committee on Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls for a long time. So I acknowledge my co-chairs and Maja Rader and Chief Doris Bill and all of the other members that are, are part of this. Uh, Adeline Weber, who's been a, a pillar in, in working in this field for her, her life. And and of course, Terry Zabo, who's the president of the Yukon Aboriginal Women's Circle, and Joy O'Brien, who works directly with survivors, Amanda Buffalo, 
and um, of course there there are so many others and I but I want to acknowledge uh, those folks right now. Um, the National Inquiry wrapped up a, a couple of years ago and in the work that they did they have a 1200 page report um, which we responded to in the report they identified four pathways that uh, contribute to the tragedy of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and I don't think that there are any differences really in terms of what we are facing in our in this crisis today in terms of these findings I think that they're related as well to the truth and reconciliation um, work which was led by um, Murray Sinclair and the other um, other um, members of, of that team uh, but the four pathways that we found in the inquiry are historic and inter intergenerational trauma, institutional lack of will to change, social and economic marginali marginalization, and ignoring the voices of Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit plus people. Um, I believe many of these same pathways led us to the substance use and mental health crisis we're seeing here today. So by tackling these pathways, we know that we can change the story, not only for Indigenous women and, and girls, but for all of us in the territory. Um, it has um, been just over a year, as I've said, since um, we released our strategy in the Yukon, which is changing the story to upholding dignity and justice. Yukon's missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and Two Spirit Plus strategy um, this was done in ceremony on December 10th, 2020, with 52 signatories signing a declaration to end violence against Indigenous women and girls. Um, this represents an absolute unprecedented commitment from all order, all levels and orders of government, um, the RCMP, grassroots organizations to work together. Um, and the strategy includes four paths. So that respond to those to those pathways that's got, that got us to here, here today. And so um, we, I did um, provide the link to, to the strategy, but the four pathways that I'm talking about today are strengthening connections and support, community safety and justice, economic independence and education, and community action and accountability. Um, those are our, our paths that we worked on to um, respond to the inquiry. There were 231 calls for justice in, in, in the inquiry. And um, we broke it down to 31 action items to provide a map um, of a, to, to the kind of long-term and systemic change that we need. It also has some very important links to the op opioid crisis and other substance use um, uh, cri uh, crisis that we have right now and we're currently experiencing in our territory. Working um, towards these 31 action items will help us uphold dignity and justice and end violence towards Indigenous women and girls and Two-Spirit Plus people. These action items can also be steps that we can that can help us address this crisis that we're in right now. And so I really wanted to make that link here today. Um, we must respond immediately to the crisis in front of us, which we have done um, with the supervised, of course, the supervised consumption site, safe supply, um, naloxone training and availability and, and much, much more. And I know that, you know, those are immediate things we can do and we are doing them. And I think there'll Absolutely, there will be a lot more that will come out of the summit. Um, and as we l look at what's been presented and what we've heard and provide and, and uh, provide a summary of that. But we must also put our minds to the longer term change, I think, that's needed. And, and that's what I think the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls and Two-Spirit Plus strategy gives us that roadmap. Um, to do that work together. And again, as I identified earlier, we had 52 signatories, all levels of government um, committed to this strategy. But I wanted just to point out a few links here 
um, to the to the strategy um, that I think are directly related to the the opioid strategy that will come out um, of of this work and um, the work that we'll be doing together. So the first one is is found again, and, and we provided the link to to um, folks so that you can see it. You can go to yukon.ca if um, as well to find it. So 1.3 strengthening strengthen First Nation identity and connections, uh, acknowledge and increase actions that that strengthen connections to the land, language, culture, spirituality, and traditional livelihood. And I know in listening to a lot of the presentations that there that's that that is a key very key focus and I firmly believe that uh, you know a lot of um, um, grounding and connecting to these areas of us and to this land this beautiful land that we live on will be um, incredibly important to uh, healing and that longer term strategy of, of um, changing the story. 1.4, community-based mental wellness support. Provide and improve community-based culturally relevant mental wellness support for victims of violence, perpetrators of violence, children witnessing violence, victims of sexual abuse and other family and community members um, develop um, community-led accessible and appropriate options for detox treatment, aftercare, healing and recovery. So you can see that that that's, you know, this, this again is the strategy for MMIWG, but it is absolutely um, connected to everything that we're doing. And so um, these action, this action plan that will come out of this, this strategy on MMIWG will link directly to all of the work and what we're talking about in the summit. And it's a really great tool and framework for that work to happen. Uh, 1.5, community and land-based infrastructure and programming. Invest in community and land-based infrastructure programming, including aftercare and development of facilities and camps in order to ensure options are available that align with community priorities. Uh, 2.1, community safety assessments, plans, and implementation. Conduct community-based safety assessments designed by communities to identify factors contributing to uh, the ongoing uh, perpetuation of violence and unsafe conditions in each and every community in the territory. Develop and implement the community safety plans and address these factors and conditions. This will go a long ways towards really stopping, you know, what we need to, I think, in every community, we're chasing the problem. We really are chasing the problem. And, and what happens with these community safety assessments and, and plans is that you really narrow in on what is important and why, you know, what we need to address first in order to have more safety in our communities. And, and I think that's, um, that, again, ties directly into the opioid and substance use crisis that we're in today. The, um, and also uh, 3.6, uh, safe housing and freedom from poverty. Uh, and this, you know, I know this is a, is a very aspirational um, in terms of the broadness of this action, but really, you know, appropriately and, and safely meet the needs of Indigenous women and girls and Two-Spirit Plus people, which includes the provision of gender-specific options for safe and affordable housing, food, clothing, and other essentials. And again, I, there are many more. Again, there are 31 actions, but these are the ones that we think that we, we should focus on first in in the strategy um, but work will be happening with all of the 31 actions um, as we go forward we're now working to complete the implementation framework on on this strategy so that all partners have more detail on the specific actions that are needed so it'll be broken down um, and uh, identifying time frames and resources and leads for all of these these areas. This will enable us to work together to tackle the big problem 
Um, definitely looking forward to working with all of our partners, Yukon First Nations, Government of Canada, private sector, grassroots organizations on, on this um, implementation of this strategy. One of the main, um, our implementation key principles is accountability. And so a, an accountability form is scheduled for May 18th and 19th of uh, this year. And so that will be another great opportunity for us to come together. I intend to work very closely with Minister McPhee and all of our partners in um, the outcomes of this summit. And of course, tying this strategy in with the work that, that we do going forward. Um, I wanted to um, take a bit of time. I'm not sure how much time I have left, um, but I wanted to, sorry, how, how long? Okay, great, thank you. I have about five minutes. So um, sorry again that we st started late, but I, I'll get to this quickly because I think it's important. I wanna put on my education hat for a minute to Minister of Education as well. And um, Yesterday was an incredibly historic day. I wanted to just touch on the, yesterday we came, I came together with leaders um, from First Nations and we, we formalized the Yukon First Nation School Board. A really historic day for Yukon. It came on the anniversary anniversary of Together Today for Our Children Tomorrow, which is a key document that guided the um, land claims and, and negotiations and self-government. And so it's, you can look it up if, if you're interested, have a, have a look at uh, what was done yesterday. You can find those documents on yukon.ca, but really exciting to see this critical change in um, and step towards reconciliation in the territory. It truly is a turning of a page and in our history book and and one that will go a long ways towards addressing the, the systemic issues that we have. And, and, um, and there are a couple, few other key things within education. I know I only have a few minutes, but we're really investing in early learning and childcare. Um, We've introduced uh, universal childcare. Uh, we're creating more spaces for uh, quality childcare throughout the territory. We have uh, many new centers opening. We signed two funding agreements totaling 54.6 million over the next five years with Canada. So a lot of investment in early learning and childcare. Um, a lot of work that's being done on um, mental health and wellness in schools. Really very pleased that we're able to keep our schools open and have in-person learning. We know that um, our, we learned a lot through COVID-19. Again, a lot of information available around um, what we're doing to improve mental wellness and health in our community, in our schools. Um, I wish I could talk more about that, but one of the big pieces that we're working on right now is really transforming inclusive and special education. Um, really, this is moving towards a full system change within um, our school system, and and it and it results out of the out of some really scathing reports from the Auditor, Auditor General of Canada around. Um, areas where we're not having the outcomes that we should have with our school system. We have 5,700 students in our, in our territory. And, um, you know, this is the investments that, and, and changes that need to happen to have better outcomes in our schools are, are very necessary and work that we're undertaking now with all of our partners. Again, I uh, could talk um, for a half hour or hour just on this alone, but um, these are all linked to this strategy in terms of, and what comes out of this summit, we need to connect those longer term um, initiatives and, and transformation of our, some of our institutions. And I think that's exactly what this work is going to do 
um, over the next while. I just wanted to quickly, because this is such a, you know, the, 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 the issues that we're talking about in the summit are what got me here in terms of my role in a political role. I had many discussions with Premier Silver um, before running in the election and then eventually getting elected and now going into my second term. I'm in my second term. I, you know, I worked for Kwanlan Dan for, for a number of years and um, the work that I did there was really about saving lives. And so, you know, the community safety initiatives that we had and also the um, land-based healing and all of that work that, that we did together, um, there was really um, my hard work. And, and so bringing that into government now is um, definitely uh, one of my priorities as uh, a minister in cabinet and working with my colleagues. So before I leave though, I, I wanted to, I read this, um, this poem or this saying, this, uh, a lady by the name of Stephanie Bennett Henry wrote it. And I was thinking about the summit when I read it. And this is what she says. I, I think your dark is really beautiful in case you didn't think anyone could see you there. I see you there. I think your light is really beautiful in case you thought you went unnoticed. I noticed. The dark doesn't hide the pain and the light doesn't make your smile true. On whatever day, whether you are covered in your own light or submerged in the shadows of your own dark, it doesn't change the color of your heart. What I'm trying to say is whether you are smiling or not, I see you. I always will. So on that note, I'll, I'll wrap up and say, you know, be kind, reach out for help, be there to listen and practice self-care and self-love. Thank you for taking some moments to listen to me talk about the work that we're doing on missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and the and some of the key areas I'm focusing on in education. Thank you.